everybody, and welcome to a swanky wild ride with Steve-O. We have got a wildly successful comedian this week. His name's Tom Segura. And when you hear about his private jet habit, you're not going to believe it. The guy is on fire. And this episode is hilarious, informative, and it happens in Austin, Texas, in the van which we drove all the way to Austin, Texas. Man, what a wild ride. And this episode is brought to you by Kamikodo Knives. Now, if you're serious about cooking, then it's time to get serious about your knives. And these knives are used by Michelin chefs all over the world. And these babies come in a killer cool box with a certificate of authenticity. Every knife is individually inspected, comes with a lifetime guarantee, and they're doing this crazy sale for Black Friday where they're really, really giving you great prices. But for the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast, you get an additional $50 off any knife set if you go to kamikoto.com slash steve doesn't hurt to use the promo code steve too now these things are just too much fun i can't chop veggies enough yes <laughs> man i'm telling you kamikoto.com slash steve for on top of the killer sale they're doing for black friday an additional fifty dollars off any knife set you want to get with its certificate of authenticity, the cool box. I mean, come on, hop to it. Kamikoto.com slash Devo. And now let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Segura in the flesh. ATX, baby. Yeah, dude. I can't believe you had this thing driven across the halfway across the country. I know. We are physically in Austin, Texas, and I employed our buddy Vinny to drive it <laughs> all the way here for this. Pretty cool. Very cool. Do you know how much I like you? I'm telling you this out of the top. This is how much I like you. I got a call this morning. Yeah. That they could fit me in for an MRI that I need to get. Oh, shit. This morning. Is this a basketball injury related we, MRI? We don't, the, the, the surgeon thinks it's not related to it, which is kind of scary. So it's in your knee? No, it's it's coming. It's stemming from my neck and spot. It's a nerve compression. He's like, I want to get this MR, and they're like, we can fit you in. And I was like, I gotta go see Steve. What I time do you gotta? Ah, what time dear. you gotta be there? No, we moved it. We're not gonna do it. Fuck, yeah. man. For this, so cheers. Dude, cheers to you. Cheers, bro. Fuck dude. my back. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's crazy, man. Bert Kreischer would never do that. Bert would have never done that. Yeah. He's selfish. Terrible person. He's a narcissist. <laughs> yeah. He just gaslights people all day. Oh, my God. Just yeah. Fucking <clears throat> sipping out of Hitler's teacup. Guy's an animal. <laughs> yeah. What? How, you really got that off the dark web? Yeah. I had to. I mean, I didn't. I had to, can't really talk about it. I, t- I talked to some people who knew some people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you use Bitcoin? No, but I used, I separated myself from the cash transactions. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they looked pretty similar when you did those photos side by side of them drinking. It was his favorite cup. <laughs> yeah. So what he, I mean, he was like, fuck Poland. And he sipped it. And then yeah. you, you saw that he, he, I saw it. I mean, it was, you know, just like on TMZ, it took me forever to notice any difference. <laughs> <laughs> pretty same. Pretty much the same thing, man. Yeah. Very much. Um, so, so yeah, dude, here we are in Austin, Texas. You've been here for what a year and a half? Year and a half now, yeah. Um, Do you like it? It's great, man. I mean, it's a total like um, it's a total change in pace. You know, the way that like I always think about it is that like we work in chaos. Yeah. Right. Like you're out. You're at shows. You're at you know thousands of people. There's all kinds of crazy shit going on. And you're coming back to a place that for me is much more tranquil, peaceful, which is a nice change from, personally, I did 19 years in LA. And I, and I don't dislike, I still like LA a lot. There's a lot of things I miss about it, a lot of things I think are rad about LA. But it always did feel like you're leaving, like you're coming back from chaos to kind of more chaos. And this is for me is like, a, like for having, you know, I have two little kids, 
It's a very peaceful setup yeah. now. I like it. I uh, I donated my skateboard to one of your kids. Dude, he fucking that kid. He's 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 like our wild dude, and so yeah, yeah he's six years old. He's six years old. We took him to the skate park, and um, he was going off the yeah. ramp with like a, a, a this dude was like, "How long has he been skateboarding?" We're like, "This is his first lesson." And we're like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a fucking maniac." And he was just yeah, he yeah. loves it. He loves it, dude. So it's, thank it's, you for that. Oh, dude, my my pleasure, man. It was a, a great way to plug my my wee man Steve-O. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it worked out great for me. Merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um. You uh, had spoken to Scott about merch, right? Like, well, yeah. what's going on with the merch? Yeah, well, I think after we, we spoke on the phone, I, you were, like, try, uh, building a website, or it was, like, your old website to your new website, or you yeah. were interested, and, yeah. It went, well, We the guy we ended up linking up with is the best. I don't even know if I linked you up with him, did I? I don't know. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't remember. Yeah, it was a couple, it was during the pandemic when everything was taken off and we were trying to find a merch person too, but I mean, that, that was our one connection. Then you had my brother on your podcast talking about Bukaki. Your brother, your, you know, here's the thing that I'll never forget about your brother when, when he was telling me, that, one of the things he was telling me was that, you know, he, he was like, I was on, he was on heroin mm-hmm. yep. and he was, he kept saying this thing that that has never left me, which was, he had a job, he was, he had like, I think real estate or something. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, I kept like, I couldn't, I just couldn't get it to get like, I would show up late or I would forget the thing. I, you know, or I would, so I was supposed to be here, but I just, I couldn't get it together. Right. And ever and I remember him telling me all this stuff. And for some reason, it's like when someone says something and dots connect, all the times in my life where I've thought about somebody being like that and you want to go, the fuck is going on with you, man? It, it made me go like, oh, maybe that person was on drugs. And not, mm-hmm. and not like drugs where you go falling down, strung out, right. clearly on drugs. It was he was doing drugs, but still, you know, participating in like yeah. trying to work. And those kind of people always made me crazy where you're like, dude, it's fucking 10 o'clock. Like, where right. are you? And he kept mm-hmm. telling me how he was like, every time I had an appointment or I was supposed to do something, I would just like fuck it up somehow. But it was because I was either on heroin or looking for heroin or trying to get heroin. And it's never left me. I think about it all the time, about all the times that you're trying to like, you know, get something done with someone and you're like, right. what is wrong with you? Yeah, there's d- right. you know, your spidey senses are going off and they're dis- they're disheveled and there's yes. like unmanageability. They're eight minutes late. And they're For like, everything. Fucking sorry. And they're like sweating. It's like, And yeah, that it's was drugs. like, he was like, oh yeah, that was, that was heroin. Yeah. Like, that was me like trying to mm-hmm. get through life, but having heroin pull me in this direction. Yeah. It's probably safe to say that if somebody's like that, there is definitely something pulling them. In that. Yeah. Where it's not a priority. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Because it's like, that doesn't, like, you're sober. I yeah. mean, not sober, but like, right, you're, yeah, yeah, but not on, you're on point. You yeah, know, you, yeah. you're, you're business savvy and like, you tell us to get here at a certain time. You're here. We're here. It's like, we got shit to do. Everybody. You kind of, you know, and, mm-hmm. but like, there's also like people, you know, this is like, we're all, you know, friends and doing this. But like, what also like when you hire someone, you're like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, like, hey man, show me this property. And the person's like not answering and then they, you're the fuck are you doing their, like, their, their address is off slightly and you're yeah. like dude you're a real estate guy like what are you how doing? the fuck is that happening how are you not doing this you know <laughs> yeah but for some like for some reason he has been that story for me is one of those things that is like it's yeah. a file in my head ever yeah. since he said it i i always think of it when somebody is off yeah i'm like yeah. maybe this person's on drugs yeah he'll be super happy to, to know that too well, I mean, he, and also I'll tell you this as somebody, I saw him do stand up, um, at the store, like, I don't know, five years ago. And I was like, oh, you know, there's kernels of like a funny guy here and stuff. And then I've seen him on Instagram posting clips now and he has gotten like yeah. light years better. He's, yeah. He's gotten really good. Yeah. He, he's been, he's been practicing a lot and he just had a kid too. I so. didn't know that. He That's, and Chelsea. Him and Chelsea. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and yes. I was going to ask you about that too. Is um, you know, because you you started killing it before you had kids, or did your trajectory start ticking <laughs> no, up? Because like, yeah, we, I, we were like, we're not having kids, right? Until we can pay for kids, right? I always thought that was a fucking 
because we had so many friends in stand up who like like even Bert for instance, you know, like he's one of those guys has a kid is like a feature act making a hundred dollars a sh you know a show and I was like uh uh and I wanted kids, I was the opposite as of like a lot of couples where I was the guy being like I want kids, and Christina was like we're gonna have kids on what we make this is fucking crazy and and I knew like other comics who had. You know, they had their kids at like 22 and they're out there Oof. doing, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I was like, I mean, that was the part that I, I didn't, I didn't fight back on that. I was like, you know, I don't mind, I don't think I feel like you have to be like doing extraordinarily well to have kids, but I didn't want to be at the level I was at, at the time, which is a feature act of making a hundred dollars a show. Yeah. And that is before I pay for my plane ticket. And you're mm -hmm. like, dude. So I'm guessing that the six-year-old is the younger one. No, no, he's he's the older. Oh one. yeah, because yeah, yeah. you've been killing it for a lot longer than that. Well, actually, you know, the he was born. We we decided we could start planning to have a kid, after. Uh, like we could start planning to have a kid, and then he came along, you know, uh, two like about two years later. Okay. So like in other words, started to do, like I probably could have been like we could have a kid. 2013, 2014, it became clear like this trajectory is going better. Like, mm. and, and, and like, hey, we can start looking to do that. And then he was born at the end of 2015. So it was like, you know, it was like solidified, like, okay, we're not going to be like, oh my God, how are we going to pay rent this month? Yeah. And then we started planning to have a kid. But so he'll, be se he'll be seven. <clears throat> yeah. Cause I, I, I mean, the, the dream of yours is to, to do comedy. Like, were you worried that having a kid would like crush your dreams? Yes. Now, in order to have children, you gotta have sex. In order to have sex, you gotta have a boner. Now, if you wanna have a raging boner, then it's time to look into Blue Chew tablets. Why? Because they've got the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except they only cost a fraction of the price. And if you're wondering, do Blue Chew tablets mean having a lot of fun the answer is yes just ask my girl because when i chew up my blue chew tablets i declare war on her vagina yeah with my wiener huge boner time i'm telling you and for the listeners of the wild ride podcast if you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code stevo they will send you an entire month's supply of blue chew tablets all you got to pay is $5 for shipping. Plus, when you get to the website and consult with the medical provider, you take care of the prescription very simply, very easily, without any awkward visit to a doctor's office. It's so convenient. And again, Blue Chew tablets are so fun. Just between me and you guys, um, I just got home. I haven't seen Lux in 12 days. I'm taking her to Bone Town, and I'm taking her to Bone Town with some Blue Chew tablets. You're out of your mind if you don't jump on this deal. It's BlueChew.com with the promo code Stevo for an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets. All you got to pay is $5 for shipping. You and your boner are going to thank me. So jump on that, and let's talk about kids. Or did it make you work harder? Well, bo both. 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 I think both happen. When you have a kid, you start to go like, oh, like your immediate thing is like, well, I'm no longer cool. Right? Because okay. you're like, when you're out and you're like drinking, partying, you're, you're just like this, you know, I have no, you nothing, you know, I can go to bed at fucking four in the morning. All of a sudden you go, if I have a kid, am I going to be like a dad comic who's like mm -hmm. diapers, you know, and like my shit's going to be automatically lame. Like that's your fear. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that happens, I think for, I think it's almost like in our DNA is like the second it's like your, 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 you know, your spouse starts showing and you're like, Oh, there's a fucking baby that I'm responsible for. You go into like this, like hustle. hunter gathering. Yeah. Hustle mode yeah. where it, it's like a drive that you didn't know even existed in you, you know, where for you're just sure. like so focused to be like, I have to provide yeah. yeah yeah i had a guy ask me one time if i you know i was like 30 and he's like are you you have kids and he's like a middle eastern guy and i mm -hmm. said 
I said, no, dude, I, I still got a lot of stuff I want to do with my life. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I, you know, I want to make money and this and that. And he was like so shocked. And he's like, in the Middle Eastern culture, the more kids you have, the more money you make. It's a good omen. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I still remember Al Madrigal. I was like, Al Madrigal was telling me, I was like, I think I was telling him, this was before we were having him. He was like, don't you want kids? Because he, he had kids young, too. And, or... He had hits young, and and I was like, yeah, but you know this and that. He goes, he it was he was kind of like that. He goes, the universe will provide. He's like, if yeah. you have kids, he goes, it it just provides. You're gonna be fine. Like, mm -hmm. Do it, do it. it. People used to have kids so that when they were old, elderly, that they would have these kids to take care of them. Yeah. And then now, it's like the kids are just baggage and burden, and and the elderly are taking care of their kids like forever and people and like American culture is kind of sad on how we treat our elderly like oh my when, god when you compare Get it to of, like it, it, uh, yeah. the yeah. Japanese you know yeah. where they just like honor they, they, their elderly they revere, yeah. they revere they, they the wash elderly. their parents feet every yeah. morning before they get out and, of bed and, and we just get them out of our sight like it, it's a party foul to be old yeah it sucks that's really sad I know and because I, I, I actually still really dig like you know, you ever just like run into some old old dude and just chat him up, and you're like, "This was like the best." Even if it's like a five minute <laughs> combo, like just the knowledge, yeah. the stories, yeah. the fun of those, and like I feel like most of them are like, "Someone's talking to me," right? You know, almost like a homeless, per you know, like a homeless right. person will be like, "Thanks for talking to me," right? Like old people would be like, "Hey, thanks." Like, That's why I'm so scared of of old age. Yeah, because to be an old attention whore yeah <laughs> you yeah know, like yes where you need to be the center of attention but nobody wants to pay attention to old people so true because old people are <laughs> are a reminder of mortality absolutely and nobody wants to think about their mortality they want to have their blinders on and just like la 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 i know and you get every year i mean i don't know if it happens to you but like every year i get older there's this part of you that has to go like oh like I am inching closer. Right. Right? Like, you don't want to, like, spend all day thinking about it. Right. But then, you, you know, like, you get phone calls like, hey, we just need to go over this whole life insurance policy you got. Yeah. And you're like, all right. And then they're like, so if you go, and you're like, oh, shit. Like, mm -hmm. You have life insurance? Oh, I got massive life insurance. Wow. Yeah. Be beneficiaries is a scary word and fucking. Yeah. And it gets, like, I mean, then there's, like, all these little types of, like, like I've had different policies and, like. It's yeah, it's a it's a very morbid topic, but then you start going like you have the conversation and in my case you finish the phone call and then you like turn around and you see your kids and you're like, right. yeah, I kind of got to sure. set this up, mm -hmm. you know. Like, Has your premium for life insurance uh gone down with your weight? <laughs> <laughs> I just I mean, I just got a new policy and um I'm I have a call about it's like it's a new type of insurance that I've never even. I think because my tour is so big, they're like, "Oh, we can get you into this big baller life insurance program now." So I think it's um, I don't know what it's going to be, but I think I'm in a better place for sure for not being huge and fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and uh, I mean, dude, you, like you look at your your catalog of specials. Yeah. And like, hey, you were a, a bigger boy. Well, you're, you're getting more handsome as you get older. It's just, dude, I, I mean, I wish I could, I get mad at myself about it because like, I, like I hate that I almost, you ever like resent that something's part of your story? Like um, I, like I, like I, res, I resent. Yeah, my attempt at, at becoming a rapper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you hate that it's a footnote? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like I almost, re, like I almost resent, you know, my own struggles with weight. Just because, just because I know it's not, um, it wasn't a disease. It's not like I'm not genetically like, oh, if I eat, it's just from being an overeating, uh, sedentary person. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, but dude, is that because like, because I get like that as well, touring on the road, like you're in a hotel room, like you kind of want to comfort eat. Yeah, it, you know what it really is. It was not, it was not dealing with emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, in a healthy way, uh -huh. I just like an emotional eater and I would just yeah. stuff yeah. myself and like eat like an asshole and not 
exercise and then you go like hey how'd you change that well i started eating healthier and exercise like it's yeah. it's so simple yeah. that right. it that it almost just the shame that you're not in a shame spiral of like masturbating in a hotel room oh yeah which fast was food, yeah and then you just go to bed take a nap before the show for three hours that's exactly what and i, I also feel like that is um part of that is actually the um when you don't know what's going to happen with your life when you when you're fully signed up for stand up like mm -hmm. fully signed up for stand up at like 20 so you realize you're like 26 27 so you know everyone started their careers kind of out of college that that you know that I yeah and they're like you're like all right now I'm like 4 or 5 years removed from that I've been and now I'm in and I'm I'm making a hundred dollars a show. I'm doing six shows, and I have to pay for my plane ticket. And you know, like I'm gonna go home with like two hundred dollars. And I think the the anxiety of of almost like this mm -hmm. is crazy would be a masturbation, food binging, lay around all day kind of cycle. Yeah, that would yeah it would be like. I seem to recall a bit in one of your earlier specials about masturbating in a hotel room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all that shit was like, this is what I'm doing. I'm talking right. about, you know, I always say, like, talk about what you know. I'm like, this is what I'm, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. Like, right. And then, like, yeah, I would, I, and I remember, like, I was, I remember lying about my weight in that special. In that special, I say I'm, <laughs> I say I'm 245. Well, I remember I do. I say I'm 245. I'm 255 in that special, and I say I'm 245 because I'm. I think I'm more comfortable lying about those 10 pounds. And then, on the next special, where I'm actually doing like my career's going better, I'm, and I remember I had a gym membership and I hired this like the trainer. I'm working out more, and I'm I'm actually like a little bulkier. But I'm eating more. I'm actually like 263 in the next one, <laughs> and I'm like just and I, and then I remember the end of, of that like that special and that tour comes out, and I got on a scale and I was I saw I was 268, mm -hmm. and I was like holy shit this is like really getting towards the 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 big 300 zero zero that you don't want to hit and that's when I was like, but even then it was like, you know it's always been like up down. Well, I. It seems that it's the opposite because, you know, you lost the weight and have kept it off. Like, you didn't... Well, to, I think when you're the person, you, you're you so fixated on right. little amounts. Because I, I actually got a lot... I lost a bunch of weight for the, the special that came out called Disgraceful, which came out in 2018. Mm -hmm. Then I gained 20 pounds, which doesn't sound crazy, but the next special that came out, I'm 20 pounds heavier. And I was so ashamed of that, so ashamed of that, because like, I was so happy about where I had been before, and and then that special came out. Then I got injured um, later that year with the basketball, basketball thing, yeah. and that was the thing that really, when I got out of the hospital, I was like, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta finally try to be consistently healthy, like meaning like, yeah. not just go pick a number, like. Cause that's the, I think that's the big fuck up for people that are like trying to manage weight as you go, this is just stick to the number. It's like, you gotta just be consistent in your maintenance. It's not about being like, I need to be two ten or two, like whatever the number is. It's like saying, no, I gotta just eat right and exercise and like not be a piece of shit yeah. all the time. And that, that's the difference from now is that I just try to be consistent with like, what, well, yeah. What do you do yeah, at What's home? your exercise of choice? Um, Right now, I kind of so I mix it up. I have I have a Peloton bike, so I do like I like that for like like on cardio days. I have kettlebells. Um, I like doing kettlebell circuits, you know. So like you do like swings, goblets, press. Like you you kind of mix up split squats, and then on the road I bring a trainer. So that's, that's really the game changer. Is I bring <laughs> I bring Sean Nix, who's like this super fit. Like, dude, who he's like, he's he's with me, like he's like this every day on the road. So it's like he orders lunch, I order lunch with him. He's like, when are we going to the gym? We work out every day. And and you're traveling on a tour bus. Yeah, we fly, and then usually the bus meets us where we fly, and then you know we're in hotels. But like, you know, we also 
It's like some hotels have like these unbelievable gyms. Some have dog shit gyms. Yeah. Sometimes there's no gym and they go, there's a fucking, you know, like a orange theory down the street. Yeah. So we just do what we do. Like, you know, we bring, we bring our, uh, boxing equipment that we might box one day but we never we basically we have no we don't we really have no days off you know so we just consistently do things what's your uh uh writer like for food food it's um my green room has turkey slices no and usually, no carbs yeah veggie platter yeah i mean most days i have yogurt and blueberries every morning for breakfast then i have like egg whites and turkey and then um, we have protein shakes usually every day, 50 grams protein in a shake. And then, you know, we do a lot of chicken, leaner cuts of beef. I used to always eat, like if I went to a steakhouse, I'd be like, what's the biggest fucking ribeye you have? And I would like stuff my, like it would hurt. And I would be like, you have to fit, like crazy shit. <laughs> yeah. like, I feel crazy. And now it's like, oh no, I'll have the eight ounce thing and i'll be like fine. filet charred rare with veggies i mean yeah i feel fine with that yeah. yeah it's it's just like do you have a sauna no i'm one of the only guys in my circle of friends everybody's a huge <laughs> are you a sauna guy too no we were talking about it and uh i, I could because i'm dying to know everybody has saunas everybody and, I, and i've been dying to get a sauna and i'm about to get a sauna the problem is nobody talks about what sauna they get because there's certain saunas that like all the research is done at 175 degrees and higher. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what sauna is the best. And I was hoping that you had one so you could tell me which one. I'm okay. So I am building my own gym. Yeah. Because I want to have some shit that I don't, I can't do at my house. So I bought a building and I'm building my own gym. Mm -hmm. And I am getting a sauna in there. And I'm going to consult with a couple friends about. Which one to get? Yes. What about I? Because I just bought the Morosco Forge ice bath. I got a cold plunge at the house. Yeah. I like that. If you ask me, it's cold enough already. I mean, winter's here. And with winter comes the holidays. And with the holidays comes a whole lot of e commerce. And I'm telling you, the only way that we can ship our autographed Wee Man and Steve O skateboards to fill the demand is with ShipStation. And if you're not selling stuff online, then allow me to report that you're blowing it and especially with the holidays man everybody's out there just making tons of money and they're doing it a lot easier with this, the help of ship station it's one interface that's super uh, intuitive easy to use brings together all of your different methods of selling if you're selling on Amazon Etsy on your own website it's all in one interface and it brings in all of your shipping services the, the United States Post Office UPS FedEx plus they hook you up with rates that are normally reserved for fortune 500 companies they just give you the best deals on shipping they make it all easy to use you print out your labels and it's all off and running plus if you go to shipstation.com then hit the microphone in the top right corner plug in the promo code stevo and you're off and running with the 60 day free trial it's so awesome and every single thing that i ship from my e-commerce online store i ship with ship station i swear by it my business is a success because of it and i'm telling you that you're out of your mind if you don't jump on this 60 day free trial for hassle free totally convenient shipping i'm telling you it's time to make ship happen so go to shipstation.com top right corner hit the microphone plug in the promo code stevo and you're off to the races now let's talk about this cold plunge you do you like it no <laughs> but no. do you love it afterwards <laughs> yes yeah it is a good and you know what really helped me get through it so i remember like when i first got it i was like all right you know what's the um like i just looked up like what you know what like what's the minimum you're supposed to try to get to it everybody's like you want to do three minutes you know start if you can't do that try to do two minutes try to do a minute you know whatever 
So I get in. I started at like 50 degrees, which like they don't, people don't even respect it. Like <laughs> cold plunge, right? And I did my three minutes. And then I was like, all right. I, I kept doing three minutes. And I started to lower the temperature. I was just trying to figure out like how can I, I don't know, do better at this or whatever. You know Wim Hof? Yeah. Sure. He has this YouTube video that's um, just a breathing exercise video. It has like 40 million views. Okay. Like 40 million. And it's him literally, it's not even his face, it's his voice taking you through a breathing exercise. In, out, now. And he's like, and he's, it's a guided breathing exercise. And you see numbers as the breath is, is uh, animated, right? I did it with him with do it so i put that on top of the like the you know the cold plunge cover mm-hmm. as i was sitting there and then i kind of just and then he's like now take this break and now let's do the next sequence and is I it start, designed for breathing while you're in a cold plunge it's actually you can use it for that or just um guided breathing even like if you want to just like start your day okay. you know like because it has multiple benefits right. but it's particularly helpful in that setting in in the cold plunge setting I think first time I do it with him in like 47 degree water six minutes Mm. because I wasn't even I was lost in the breath guidance so like highly recommend if you're gonna try that or if you're trying to improve to pull up that video and just let you won't even be aware of time it's just you just have Wim Hof taking you through it. It's yeah, you got a cold plunge. I you got a start. cold plunge. It's been sitting in my front yard for literally months. I don't even know how many months. A lot of months. I haven't <laughs> even tried it yet. Try it. <laughs> I haven't even tried it yet. And the last I heard was that like inside it's just like growing mold. <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta fix you that. Just to have that treated. <laughs> yeah, but do you, do you notice a difference in your sleeping and all that? With after the cold, do you, do you notice any difference from it? Oh my God. Well, the, the first thing is like when you get out and in the moments afterward, I, uh, uh, after there's all types of actual chemical, um, releases going on. Yeah. You know, your brain is releasing a number of real, um, endorphins and, and like, yeah. Uh, what is it? Norepinephrine yeah, or something. Yes. Yeah. All, all that is actually, so you do have this sense of like euphoria and and like i mean you you feel like you're invigorated you, yes you're very invigorated yeah well it's a, it's a dope feeling it really is all right well, and i'm gonna have to try it because that's a whoop strap right yeah and w- w- do you are you noticing good recoveries after you do ice bath like what's when you wake up in the morning what, what's your percentage of recovery normally it's been rough for me lately it has been my travel and and I'm on ninety nine percent recovery today. <laughs> I'm on like, <laughs> and I'm like thirty four percent. But I think that that's good. Today I got last night. I went to bed like aberrationally early. Oh, I went to, like I'm normally like a night guy. I just tapped out. At but dude, like we we'll have a call with Whoop and Steve's like, yeah, my HRV recovery is like one forty, and they're like, what? Like triathletes don't even have that. That is incredible. <laughs> what do you what do you attribute that to? Um, it's it's how good of a job I'm doing at avoiding sugar. I really? Think. Yeah, I noticed that like when I cut out sugar, my HIV goes way up. My um, that is my you know everybody had like when I was used to I used to want to just like lose weight. People would yeah. go like cut out your drinking, and I'm like yeah I don't really drink, and then they just go oh. <laughs> and you're like, Yes. Thanks for the advice. How about, how about Bert? He's like, yeah. I switched to tequila. The, the yeah. Tequila, my whoop recovery is off the charts. He's dude. so proud of his tequila discovery. I mean, he really feel he really feels like he made, like 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 a doctor who's like, you know what is causing cancer? Like he feels like he made an actual landmark discovery with tequila. Yeah, all, all the comments on our on the video that I posted about that clip is just like, yeah, that's an alcoholic talking right there oh yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. Like, and, and he's like telling he's like here's what you need to do you don't need to stop drinking you need to start drinking tequila like he's really <laughs> yeah proud of this and I'm like you think that's what it is he's like a hundred percent so out of his mind um now for me I have noticed so much of how my life is like how everything in this shell is affected by sugar 
Yeah. If I, uh, dude, like it's not just weight, digestion, feel, like inflammation, and everything, mood. And if I and I can have this like thing where I won't have. I call, I'll have incidental, incidental sugars are sure. what I call like, you know, this thing has two grams of sugar in right. it, right? You're like, whatever. But I mean, if you go like, I want sugar, like I want yeah. a brownie or whatever, you know what I mean? Right. Like a donut. I can have that and be like, fine. But if you go like, let's have another one and let's have one tomorrow. Like, and, and I build a pattern. It, it only within a couple days, I notice a complete transformation, like a complete <laughs> yeah. downward yeah. spiral. And like, we're both like addicts in every sense of the word. Uh -huh. So like, if, if I open that cage door, a little crack, the whole gorilla comes out. Sugar is my favorite one. It's yeah. my favorite one. It's not. It's the number one drug in the world. It is. Yeah. And I can like, people go like, if you had to like, you know. Like there, because high fat is very satiating, right? Like something like mm -hmm. rich and for sure and butter and I'm like, of course, delicious. But if you go me like give me the option, I'll be like, oh, sugar, sugar every time. Yeah. Big like time. on the way here, I had a headache. I uh, woke up in the morning, had coffee, whatever, had a headache, and then I was like, man, I need to eat something. And they had mango dehydrated mango uh, in the front on the way here, and I and I ate a couple. My headache went away, and I'm like, it's 22 grams of sugar for a fucking dehydrated mango. I'm like. I just drank a Coke. Yeah. My headache's gone. I think it's yeah. a problem. Sugar's incredible. It's incredible. They, they, they think that, like, when I went taking tours of the, the, the Mayan ruins, they were like, dude, these fucking ruins were around for 10,000 years or 5,000 years. And then when the British came, when they invented, when they started, like, teaching them how to mill for sugar, everybody scattered because they, the, the diseases started happening and diabetes and people started dying off. That they thought the land was cursed, so they left. But really, what happened was they started teaching them how to like make rum mm. from all the sugar cane and shit. And like they left within a hundred years of that happening because everybody started dying of diseases. Unbelievable. I mean, sugar. Sugar, man. Yeah, it is. It's deadly. In, in Texas, people are healthier. I mean, I guess California's a pretty high baseline for. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Texans feel more like, I mean, you know, this also, Austin's kind of an anomaly when you say right. Texas, because like, sure. it really is like a unique place. I mean, this has, this has, this is the city that has the hippies and the, right. the plant-based people on right. top of, obviously you still have like your barbecue and all that stuff, but right. it is kind of a unique. It's kind of Nashville-y. Yeah. And, and Portland. Portland. Yeah. Like, like the, the whole keep Austin weird. There, I mean, it's the blue city in a red state. It really yeah. is. You know, I mean, this is like, mm -hmm. you, you can go 30 miles outside of the city and you feel like you're in a different country. You right. Know? So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, I taped my first special in Austin. You did? Where at? At the Paramount. Paramount. Oh, it's a great, it's a great spot. Yeah. I. Uh, you guys I, were doing a live podcast there. We did. We did one last right? year. Yeah, it was fun. Super fun. It does with podcasting, um, like getting guests. Is that? I thought it was going to be more challenging than it is. Do you piggyback on on people flying in to do Rogan? No, at all? no. I really and I thought that was going to be a thing, and I didn't want it to be. But I also, right. you kind of just have like this acceptance. It's been. It's been its own, like, no, people are flying in to do our people show. People are flying in to do, dude, epic, yeah. man. Yeah, Congrats I mean, I that. just had Tarantino on, and <laughs> wow. he didn't do, he did Rogan a couple months ago, but like, right. I was, or last year, um, but, but I mean. Is Tarantino promoting? A book, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, he is, that's yeah. right. So he had, like, but he came that. in, did our show, and like, I mean, I've had a bunch of comics that like, they're just booked. We, you know, we fly, we've flown people in, we've had people, you know, we just like, we also find out who's coming to town. Like we do it that right. way. And you yeah. know, Joe's thing too is it's, it's such a juggernaut. Like what he has yeah. is so, it's so its own unique on a rocket ship thing that like, you know, I never thought of it as like, I've never thought of it as like I'm competing with him or anything like that. It's like, he does this thing. He also has an incredibly full schedule too, Yeah, where it's like, booked out a yeah. like month or two in advance. Do you so, have a booker? 
We use, so we've, we've used like, we have internally, we have people that book. And then we also sometimes use an external booking service for certain people, but like also the agencies will help like, you know, like your agents. Yeah. And like a- we'll kind of figure out like, you know, who, who they think would be a good fit, who might be willing to. And I have like a lot of, um, started to even, I'll find out somebody that I want to, man, I'd love to podcast with this person, get their information and start even personally reaching out to people. Yeah. I'll do that too. Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> I met up with the, the guy uh, who shit his testicles out oh, of his Oh, Pierce ass. Paris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this, uh, that dude's rad. He's the best. Yeah. He's the best. I, I um, spoke with him uh, since, since they're doing your podcast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I was like, okay, like, here's the deal. I think that uh, my episode with you was supposed to come out the one week, but it came out a week later. Uh-huh. So he wasn't privy to to everything I discussed about my future plans. And so I, I filled him in all, uh, you know, in, in person. Okay, so this is what, and he's like, oh, I'm in his wheelhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you guys are like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm in his wheelhouse. He's so fun, and he's so creative. Like, dude, every time we announce a new live show, which is like our ticketed event, you know, yeah. which is like the no rules. Right, right, right. Crazy um, streaming show. He puts together a pitch deck. Dude, he's, of like, he, he's, he's made, a professional. He's yeah. made multiple pitch decks for me. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. He's like, yeah, and then this will be on the back of a semi and it'll be driven into my asshole. And you're like, all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's, he's really. Yeah. And I also say, I know I've said this on other podcasts, but I am always, I mean, and I, I think you probably have uh, uh, discovered the same thing. I'm always taken by how. Almost everybody I've met in the adult industry are like the kindest, like yeah, nicest, sure. most down to earth people that I've worked. I've like they're always so friendly. Yeah, I want to get a porn star on this show, and I cannot wait to start training with them. Yeah, I'm training my asshole. Train your asshole. <laughs> Nobody can get it ready like he can. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, he he was just describing to me like the the you have, you have like an outer butthole and an inner butthole and you have to start training the inner butthole oh my god that's how things get stuck the inner butthole yeah are you ready for this <laughs> i'm gonna give it hell dude yeah yeah so wait he, he described getting some some serious objects in there i bet well you can get a fist up there that is fucking wild to me that yeah. is something i don't want anything to do with either i have right. zero interest i've had fingers in there that's the uh, most. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I've had you know, yeah. a finger in there. <laughs> yeah, sure. But a fist, I have zero right. interest in. Right. I, I. I don't. I even here's the thing. Like, I've had a finger in there, <laughs> and I've been like, I want to, and like, I'm not trying to not enjoy this, but I almost felt like the more joy came from the moments before the figure, you know what I mean? Like the outer rim. Of course, that's where all the nerve uh, endings are. Yeah, but the inside wasn't as thrilling to you me. You put another one, no, 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 no. But you, You're like, no, no, no. I was like, and like, are you having fun? I'm like, I think so. Yeah. And I want it to be fun, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I think that's how girls feel. I guess like, you know, the first three times you do anal, it's horrible. Yeah. And then after that, it's the best thing ever. Really? That's So, that's, so I've heard. So you've heard. So I, uh, it's probably like that with, uh, with the finger. You a big anal guy? No, I like the idea of it. Yeah, like the the idea of how dirty it is. Right, is cool, but like the reality of it, it's like oh, there's a piece of shit in there. Yeah, or yeah. you know something I'm not, like that. I'm not too concerned with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so we were dying to ask you of of the flying that you do. Yeah. What percentage of it is on private jets these days? God damn it! <laughs> it's pretty high. Seems like somebody feels a little bit guilty about their private jet habit, and maybe they could use some therapy. The good news is that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp.com, which is the largest online therapy service in the world. And maybe it's like serious things that you got to work out, relationship problems, problems with your boss. Maybe that's tough to talk to about like with so you don't know where to turn well betterhelp.com takes all of that out of the equation and they've matched over 3 million people with 
professionally licensed, vetted, qualified therapists. And I will tell you myself, I am in therapy and I feel very strongly about the benefits of it. So for you, if you want to make it even more affordable than it already is, betterhelp.com, that's better dot com slash Stevo will give you 10% off your first month. And I really think it's worth giving it a shot. Like I said, we've all got things that are difficult to talk about. We don't know where to turn to. And with betterhelp.com, you take an a very simple questionnaire. They match you up with the right therapist for you and boom, you're off to the races. So one more time, go to betterhelp.com slash Devo. That's better H E L P.com slash Devo for 10% off your first month. I swear by it. And I think you will too. Now let's talk about these private jets. <laughs> are you ashamed of that i mean it's a little you're a little embarrassed by it you but also it. well here's here's the re, like the absolute real real truth of this the tour that i have been on i'm coming everywhere yes the i'm coming everywhere world tour is literally I mean, i'm talking logistically logistically impossible to do this amount like this these shows if you look at the weeks and the amount of shows and the amount of cities, you could not, I, I would I would have to reduce the tour to do it commercially. It wouldn't be the same tour. It literally, you can't go, I'm doing Kansas City, Cheyenne, Eugene, Ottawa, Providence, in a, like you wouldn't be able to do it commercially. Mm-hmm. Like the only way you can do yeah. that touring is to charter because you're literally going from the show to the airport to fly to the city so that you're there. Like, You'd have to do three connections on some of those. We, we would miss flights. Now, I don't do every flight like that. Um, there's, there's weeks where we go, all right, I'll fly the, you know, it was like, I was flying to Toronto and I was like, you know what? I'll leave the day before and fly commercially. It was no big deal. If I fly to LA from Austin, there's so many flights. I'm like, I'll take a commercial flight. But on the, the routing of the tour, it's mostly charter. Yeah. Do can you fly charter doing theaters? Does it make sense economically? It depends. Two theaters a night, yes, or like if you were consistently selling out two theaters a night, would it make sense to fly private? On on the answer would be well, it, it really is in a depends scenario because when I what I mean by theater like first of all there's different size theaters like all this is very right. so you know it's like I mean? 3000 and above you probably can yes if you're doing 3000 seats a theater that's a pretty good size theater that means you're doing 6000 tickets a night and you're doing that a few nights like 3 nights a week 4 nights a week yeah, yeah you could do it you still would probably it's so expensive you would still probably go back and forth meaning like you take the commercial ones yeah, yeah. when when it makes sense it it is extraordinarily expensive but here's the thing the way you if you look at it like the way i'm explaining you're taking that charter flight to make money it's not just for like the flex or the luxury of the flight you're actually going like this flight is allowing me to go make money in this other yeah you know that's our goal we want to do you know (laughs) are are you still getting burnt out flying private uh the same way you would commercial or or not the same i mean you the, the biggest convenience you find from a charter flight, people, you usually think of it as like when you see it, you you know, you see the inside of it, you're like, oh my God. It is the fact that when the flight's at 10 a.m., you could pull up at 9.45. Mm-hmm. And that when you land, you literally go from the tarmac to the hotel. It's the time saving. You, yeah. yeah. It's like, it feels like... Um, and sleeping all the way com- reclined. Oh, yeah. And also, like, sleeping in that morning instead of getting up three hours before you need to right. be at the airport. Yeah. So, like, it's it's that you actually feel like you time travel. Like, you land, you're like, I can't believe we, we're here now. Like, you know, or like, or you're in the next city you're performing in two hours after the show that just ended in another city. So, you're like, <laughs> oh, we're here now. Like, you can't believe that you're there that quickly. That's the part of it that becomes, you're like, this is so great. I don't want to give this up. But it is, it is 
extremely expensive. Yeah. 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 When, when you're doing your uh, tour bus legs. Yeah. Is your tour bus these days wrapped with obnoxious Bert stuff? No, it's, it's, <laughs> it is completely discreet. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I I I I knew from day one I would not be that guy because I am I don't want right like, who's in there. I'm the opposite, you know. And the fucking first time I saw Bert's bus, I was like, <laughs> I was like, you're gonna have everybody knocking it. He goes, no. And then he called me. He's like, "Dude, people are knocking on the door." Me to come out. I go, "Yeah, it's got your face on it, bro." I the last time I spoke to Bird in here, yeah, I cursed him. I said, "You bastard!" I saw you doing it. I fucking wrapped my bus. Of course, dude. you fucking. You, you, you. Of course. Yeah, we have. Steve has a sign that says, I, "Like I, it's I, not okay to knock." Yeah, Wait. yeah, it's not okay to knock. Please do not disturb. And, and it's on a motion sensor, so when they're walking up to, like, it comes yeah, on. Yeah, that's, you have that. That 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 diminishes it, but right. it's not eliminated. Eliminate it. But, <laughs> like, at, I know that you at least have that, like, hey, respect me. Um, um, Bert doesn't have that. He, he right. his, his sign might be a guy, like, go ahead and knock. <laughs> yeah. 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 Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you the machine story. Oh my god! <laughs> he sits him down, he starts knocking. He's like, "When I was twenty-two years old." Yeah. 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 Uh, how much time does Bert spend in Austin? Like, um, he. I mean, you know, it's not easy. Obviously, like he's he's made um, huge sacrifices for it. But yeah, he comes in, and we try to do. We try to bank. You know, I mean, the show. We always try to like the show is. The two of us, we do, we call it guest bears because we just have to now. But like, he'll come in. Guest bears, meaning like. Meaning uh, someone sits in for right. for one of the two of us. So like. Right, I was I was a guest with him. Yeah. And like this week, you know, him, he and Neil Brennan are on. Um, and then like, I just had Giannis on. Like, you know, so people come in so that we don't, we, we never want to go dark for a week. Right, 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 right. Um, but like, he'll come in. He just, he was in town. He, we, we recorded four together. He's coming in town next month and we'll do four. To, we'll do four over two days. So basically, we'll do a month of shows in two days. Um, we'll try to do something together so we have like an activity right. or something, something fun to do. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's just mm -hmm. the way to, to keep the show going. Is two bears, does it do bigger numbers than your mom's house? Or about, um, about the same? They vary. I mean, like some weeks um, your mom's house will do better, some weeks two bears. I think the um, consistently... They're both huge. They're both, they're both pretty big. They're both pretty big. I mean, the yeah, it just depends. I mean, they're, but they're both pretty solid, like right. big, big shows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bert's got a feel a little bit sad about how Burt Cast does compared to... Oh, it's not even close. Yeah. yeah no. it's, it's... Does Burt fly private? Yes, a lot. Yes, but I fly a much better aircraft. <laughs> I, I, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, we, we uh, did a Canada tour and um, for my New Newfoundland shows. Yeah. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm going private. Yes, dude. I, yeah. I, I'm, on, I'm on your guys' heels, man. I've been... Uh, Dude, when you um, I've been I've been um doing theaters where even like Bert's coming up, you know, like yeah, yeah, like uh, let me the, the, the electric signs like Steve O's tonight, like Bert's, you know, yeah, next month, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm even in the mix on the same theater. That's rad, days. dude. Congratulations. It's, thank you. Super stoked. Do you see more sellout tickets from like a swipe up or from like promoting it on the podcast? <sighs> Or do you are you like reluctant to do that, or are you like no? Hey, let's, I, let's sell out, fucking boom. Let's do a swipe up and like, hey, there's still tickets left in Phoenix. Does that like? If there's still tickets left, you know, that's usually a post. I think you know, like when they're like, hey, there's, if you want to do a post, there's there's tickets left for Friday's show. That's yeah. a post. Um, usually podcast stuff is more like announce stuff. You know, like yeah, these are the shows coming up. And then that has its own effect, but the posts usually work for like trying to clean up a show, you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm uh, very gun shy about promoting tour on social media. Why? 
because I just feel like uh, like the, I want my engagement to be strong. I want what I post to be like super popular on there, and if it feels too pr promotional, I feel like or that like solicitation. I, it's going to turn people off. I don't think so because you do enough that isn't that that you've bought yourself yeah. the yeah the opening to do. Okay. Yeah. I feel like Instagram was like that a couple of years ago, but now it's like, it just needs content. Like your people are like starving. I mean, I'm the, uh, look, I'm terrible. I, I, I don't particularly like, I'm, I'm not a, a, a good social media manager. You know, yeah. like, I, I mean, like I think you like, like Bert, for instance, I mean, I'll give him full credit. You know, his, his tour promos are great. He's the promo king. He, you know, content, you do great content, you know, I'm, I'm more reluctant, I just go like, you know, I find that the stuff that does the highest engagement for me is anything that is truly an organic thing, which is usually actually yeah. a still, it's a still with a comment. Right. Those do the biggest things for me by far, I mean. Yeah, and like, like grievously fucking yourself up playing basketball. Playing that will do it too. <laughs> that will do very well. That would actually, that actually made me an incredible amount of money. But, um, uh, but the, the uh, you know, like, I, I, do, I do a lot of promotional stuff and I just kind of, like, meaning like, new podcast clips, here yeah. they are, announcement of things, here they are. Because I kind of go like this is a promotional tool, and then I'll tell myself like, all right, you know, um, you know, like I ran into Steve, I'll, I'll put that up, and that'll right. do huge engagement. It's a, it's like it's it's just a photo and a caption, and it's kind of like, all right, this is not a this is not a um, I'm not saying click here. It's just right, right, right. This is just a photo, yeah. um, and I think those are important to have. But I think you do so much content that you've bought yourself the goodwill yeah. to promote whenever you want, you know. I think once you get fake tits, that's going to be a fun promotion. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Are you getting fake tits? Yeah. That's great. Those will look good on you. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to go see him on tour taking a photo with his titties? Oh, how long will they be? I, I'm only planning on keeping them in for three months. And that'll in? Be You're going to actually get them in? I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna get a, a big yeah. Job. What other kind of fake tits are no. you talking about? <laughs> I thought you were talking about like a prosthetic. Over no, 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 I'm no, no, fucking no. getting breast augmentation surgery, pal. <laughs> what gave you and, this idea? And and I'm and uh, I'm told that that I can do D or double D. <laughs> so you know I only heard double D. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wait, what made you do this? Um, it's the next logical step for me in the the. The, the, the gone that's where that that's where the bar is at bro <laughs> that's, where, that's where the bar the is gone at. too far yeah i was going to sleep last night at 8 30 p.m and i was thinking about tim kennedy i was like dude i could get tim kennedy to hook up the sniper this is the sniper sniper, <laughs> sniper his tits off <laughs> <laughs> you, you you can have him on your mom's house when he's got the titties i would love that oh, dude, are you gonna change yeah. your pronouns no, 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 no. I'm not, I, Dude, I identify bro. as as a heterosexual guy. Okay, cisgender male, white male. Yeah, this it's, it's um heterosexual guy. Double D. That's what I'm told, man. Jesus. I got uh, I, I'm developing man boobs, dude. I can fit them. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. That's why. And when do you know when you're doing it? Um, whenever my next special comes out. And then, <laughs> and then you'll have the obviously the removal done at the after the. Yeah, yeah, it's from my next tour is the Gone Too Far tour. <laughs> That's where Pierce is going to come into play. I, I think I think this is going to do so well. You're going to be on nothing but PJs. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. I got I got I got the connect for you. By the way, when you want to when you want to pull the trigger, when you get your titties, he's got the connect. Yeah. 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 Holy yeah. shit, dude! Yeah, it's it's good stuff, man. Um, how, how's married life, dude? You know, it's, it's good. I, um, I will say that embarking on a tour like I did is not helpful. Okay. <laughs> it's not good for home life. Right, right. You're just gone to, I was gone too much. Yeah. I think I, if I, um, I re, I mean, I talked to my agent about it. I was like, yo, this next, I'm not going to tour for a minute. I'm not like one of these right. guys that finishes the tour and announces my you know well, right I, I mean, you don't want to take some time off to chunk together your next album. yeah I, I i like that's how i work i i for sure i work you know hey let's start over i go to a club i start yeah. working it out and like i um i already told him i was like next tour 
you know, Bill Burr style, <laughs> sixty cities, but spread it out. Yeah, uh, I'm not doing. You know, this tour I'm on, dude. I, I mean, it started in August of twenty one. It'll end May fifteen of twenty three, and it's going to end up being, like, I mean, you came everywhere, like, like three hundred shows in like. Yeah. 190 it's it's way too crazy it's no it's too hard to like have a healthy home life right and and do that it's it's tough man um i uh have my relationship we have, we have a deal like we don't spend more than two weeks apart that's a good one and we've been breaking the rule a lot with the, and it's hard because with, with the tour bus you know like it doesn't make sense to go out for just two weeks. You yeah, know, yeah. You're, you're, it makes more sense to go for three weeks. Yeah. You ever fly her out? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's she's invited everywhere I go all the time, no matter what. How like, long you guys uh, been together? Almost six years. Almost six years. Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. I know. It's my first time I ever made it to one year. Really? Yeah. This is the first time. I I know that my previous record was like ten months in a relationship. Your whole life. Yeah. Wow. And now uh, I've got I've got the one, dude. Good for you, man. Yeah, thank you. Congrats, that's awesome. Yeah, dude. Um, so uh, how long have you been married? We are at um, fourteen years. Fourteen years of marriage. Of marriage. How long were you together before you got married? Like three and change, I think. Yeah. Uh huh. It's a long time. Young. That's yeah. pretty young. Right. Young hearts beat fast. I mean, I was, yeah, we started dating when I was 25. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you're 43 now. Mm hmm. Um, you, uh, you're coming, I'm coming everywhere tour. Mm hmm. Um, do you know what the special is going to be called? No, I just shot it. I shot it two okay. weeks ago. Um, where at? In Phoenix at the Celebrity Theater. Okay. Um, so I shot four there. I've never shot four before. Ah, uh, four shows for one special. Yeah. I, all my friends started doing it, and I got kind of like, I want to know what that feels like. And it, it is kind of a game changer. Because I think what actually happens is knowing that you have four actually helps you on, like, show one. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. most yeah. I've shot a bunch of specials. you got to get the jitters out on the first and one. And you're like, and all right, the and then the second one's, the, one's one. the one. And then, like, all of a sudden I know I have four. It's like the first show was, like, unbelievable. And I go, I actually think it was unbelievable because I know I have four. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think I could actually, I don't think I would have had the same experience if it if I had it's, only it's two. It's just so nerve-wracking with the fucking but shitheads hate, and the yelling shit out, you know? like crazy. We had this guy, dude. You know, the celebrities in the round, right? It's a It's a theater in the round. Right, okay. So I'm like, it's unique in the sense that I'm actually almost moving the entire special. Like, you know, in some, in some mm -hmm. way, like pacing. Right. And, you know, in any direction, there's audience. So, like, you turn here, there's audience, you know. And I'm walking this way. And at one point, it's like I'm walking across the stage. And I look here. And I see somebody going <laughs> like this, right? Like at the back. And I just, to myself, I'm like, this is going to be a problem, right? Like, I'm like... <laughs> So I just keep going, performing here, and it's like, I hit some punchline, you know, it's like, laughs, and then there's a dip, right? There's the natural lull of, like, that bit is over, and as it's, like, about to, tr the guy goes, Tommy! Tommy! And I'm like, <laughs> yes? Hello? He's like, what's up, man? <laughs> and I'm like... What's up, dude? <laughs> and he goes, no. Nah. Yeah. And I go, you think this is the time to do this? Like you're at, and he goes, it is what it is. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess, <laughs> I, I guess it is. And then you just see like security come. Right. And then after the show, <laughs> I'm like, what was up? And they go, they couldn't understand why we were throwing them out. And I'm like, really? They're like, yeah, we were just right. saying what's up. I'm like, so fucked up. You know, you're like. Right. I just saw a Carrot Top show recently. How was that? I loved it. I loved it. In Vegas? In Vegas, yeah. And uh, somebody piped up with something. And he just says, he says, oh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not busy at all right now. What's it going to yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm not busy at all. What's going on? Dude? And it was just so masterful. Man, he, he is, um, 
underrated for like how seasoned a yeah. performer the man is too. Criminally mm-hmm. underrated is uh, a title I've. Yeah, like the guy's a punchline to a lot of people, and you're like, this right. guy has been fucking hammering this shit. He, since yeah, ninety one. He's so funny, man. Yeah, he's a funny dude, and he's, those concepts, like yeah. coming up with that shit, right. they just dismiss them as like prop you know it's like it's and you're like do you know what the thought that it takes to come right. up with that shit to get a laugh out of that like yeah i love it yeah and, i and think the, it's i think he's uh, actually a very funny dude he's he's great we we uh had him on the podcast and oh, uh now I get it, him on. it was fantastic and it performed like, like bananas it, i mean not bananas but perform uh, well yeah it yeah. was it was it, how fucking jacked is he not so much anymore. Oh, he toned it down. Yeah, he and, went crazy for it. I saw. Well, I was no. like, Steve brought it up, and he, I he, he didn't really want to broach the subject. Yeah, that, that this was, is something, by the way, uh, <laughs> that is going on more and more. Where I can't say somebody, I can't, because of the fact that they were so adamant. Where like, someone, some dudes getting like super crazy jacked, mm-hmm. and they're like, I don't want to talk about. Right. That and you're like, okay, but it's like, yeah. I, I brought it up with Carrot Top, and he said, he said, yeah, the, the camera adds ten pounds or something. <laughs> but he was but fucking... there's this thing. But here's the thing: like these dudes, like the most famous dudes in Hollywood, right? In 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 like action movies the, and shit. Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth, The Rock. Yeah. I mean, the Rock is juiced to the gills, and you're like, he's fifth forty eight. Yeah. No, no, no. He's he's well over fifty now. The rock. Oh, really? And, and but here's the thing, man. Like when you're when you're this size, when you're he's like six four, six five, and you're two sixty five of just muscle, no body fat, and you, I mean you're chiseled. Like, you you know, you're the 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 human body doesn't just like naturally do this, except for in like the most. Rare, spectacular cases, like right? Francis Ngannou. Ngannou, exactly. Something like that. But what's weird is, like, the complete reluctance to say, like, yeah, I am... Um, I'm juiced to the... It's like, hey, kids, this body takes half uh, a million a year to get to. Correction. Like, why not be... He's exactly 50. 50 years old, right. Yeah. And, like, you know, you know, 50, walking around like that, it's crazy. But what I'm saying is, like, why... Why are we pretending? First of all, there's a couple of things. Like, if you think that if you just got on a cycle, you're going to look like The Rock, you're out of your goddamn mind. Right? No, right. It takes an incredible amount of work and dedication and discipline to get there. But why are we all pretending right. like all these dudes aren't on shit? It's fucking crazy. And they all are like, don't talk about it. And you're right. like, all right. <laughs> and <laughs> um, what... Uh... I think this came out on the Netflix show Killer Sally, which which I, I quite enjoyed. They said that there was like a bodybuilding competition, and then all of a sudden they 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 made it mandatory no steroids uh-huh. for like two years, and like visibly like they just weren't so impressive anymore, yeah. and they were like, "Okay, screw that, we're back on." Back on the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody wanted yeah. to see these guys look. There's a lot like, of these dudes that are like. You don't just don't talk about the fact that I'm on shit. And you're like, it was one of my favorite things when I, um, you know who Mark Bell is? Mark Bell. Mark Smelly Bell. He was like, uh, he was a world class power lifter. Now he's like a fitness. He, he he developed the slingshot, which is this like yeah, yeah. thing that you know you can helps like bench press. And like when I first met him, I was like, we were looking at like these photos of him doing these crazy power like. 1200 pounds squats and shit and you're like jesus fucking christ like and he's like well you know i'm on like 20 peds like you know like i'm <laughs> i'm on all this shit but it, like here's the thing so he's like yeah i'm on that shit but also like you also go like yeah you know that if you took that shit you're not squatting that like the guy right. is it's a combination of the thing but he's not going oh i never took anything like the people live in this fantasy right. of like you own it. Yeah, like Schwarzenegger is like, yeah, we all did steroids. That's yeah. what we like. When people are like, you did steroids, he's like, we all we all 
to them. Like, right. do you think that if you did steroids, you would look like Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger? <laughs> like, it's not it's, it's not impossible. that easy, man. Part of me thinks that it should be a requirement for professional athletes to take performance enhancing drugs. I mean, who doesn't want to see an enhanced performance? I mean, <laughs> I mean, dude, baseball in like 2006 when like Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, and Sammy Sosa were crushing home runs. Like, that was the best time in baseball. It's the only time I've ever watched baseball. Yeah, exactly. I can't stand baseball. I just want to see them fucking crash home, home runs. Yes. <laughs> I want to see people roid rage and like break bats over their fucking head or knee or yeah. like get pissed and throw Gatorade onto the field. Like, and But like, for instance, that's an anomaly. Bo Jackson, that's a guy that could do that shit steroid free. He's a freak of nature. He can run a, a, a sideways on walls. Yeah. That's a once in a generation type of person. But everybody else is probably looking at it like, how do I do that? Steroids. That's how you <laughs> yeah, do that. Dude. Yeah. Uh, nobody's broken a bat over their knee in a long time, have they? Not that I've seen. He did that shit with ease. <laughs> I know, dude. Imagine that. Just he how would pissed do that you have to with be. Like, he would do it like it was a twig. He was like, damn. Mm -hmm. And just like snap a bat over his knee. Yep. Bo knows, man. Bo. Bo. I would love. If, and I mean, then he went and played football. Yeah. They say that he would show up to camp, right? And camp is like grueling and it's when you you think you're in shape, right? Like players will stay in shape, but then they get to camp and they're like, oh, I'm not in game shape, you know? And that Bo would show up like three weeks late to camp and right out of the gate would just be blown by everyone. They were like, like, it was like he didn't even need camp. That's crazy, yeah. dude. Um, so... You're home for a second and just back out on tour. Uh, back on tour tomorrow. Um, it is the end of my actual... No. I have... Sorry, man. I have three more weeks of domestic touring. And then it's over December 4th. And then I do Hawaii for New Year's. And then next year is all international dates. And it ends in May. Wow. So you're going to have this special in the... It's just the the same show, and then. Well, the thing is, like, there um, we're discussing when to release it. Right. So, like, I don't know when it'll is, be. Released. Is it gonna be Netflix? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a Netflix special. Um, it'll come out. I don't know when it'll come out. We we have to talk about it, but. Is it? Are, are you doing that Netflix deal where you own it and you're licensing it to them? No. Right. Okay. Congrats. That's the. Yeah. No, I did a different deal. Yeah. He's like, they have that deal? No, that's the yeah, thing that yeah, they've been yeah, doing. Yeah, they've been doing the thing. Yeah, that's a big thing they're doing now is that they're... It's a licensing deal. They. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's killer, man. What, what can we promote for you? Um, you know, um, a bunch of international dates are coming up. We've been moving to, like, to bigger... We're doing some arenas in the UK and London and Dublin and Glasgow and then... Um, yeah, the UK is our second biggest audience. Yeah, huge, huge audience there. Um, we moved to bigger places in Berlin, in Paris, in Vienna. Um, wow, I'm doing some bigger places in Paris and Vienna. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Because Vienna is going to be more English speaking, but not Paris. Paris. That's... What ends up happening though is like when I, because well, I did some of these markets last time, is the people that come to these shows all like I'm doing also doing Latin, I'm doing Chile. Peru and Mexico City. I'm looking at a Mexico City show. Yeah, the people that come are either, either expats or bilingual, you know, they're fluent English speakers. Right. You know? So they actually end up being better audience than you imagine will come right. to the show. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, I have those dates and obviously podcasts all, you know, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's epic, it. dude. And you missed you missed a crucial MRI to do this. Man. To do this, yeah, yeah. I can't thank you enough, dude. Yeah, thank I you. might wither away just because I did. This. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, dude, uh, yeah. I love you, man. Love thank you too, you. man. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Can I take a moment to express gratitude that Tom Segura skipped the opportunity to have that crucial MRI so that he could do the Wild Ride podcast with me? What a bro. And what great people you are who stick around to the very end. You know, I love you. Oh, and by the way, my dad's in town. Careful about that whiteboard. Whew. Big time plans going on back there. Uh, yeah, man. And uh, candidly, we shot this today in Austin. And clearly I'm back home already. I had a long 
and a fruitful day. And I love you. Thank you for sticking around. I'm going to bed with Lux. <laughs>